strongly God saying that revival will only come for those who are thirsty and hungry for Jesus. So my question is, are you hungry? Are you thirsty for God to move in your life today? Oh, we need you, Lord. Come on, sing that out with all you got. Sing, come like a rushing wind. Sing, come like the fire again. Come like a burning flame. Have your way. Have come on, one more time. We sing it out with all you got. Sing, come like a rushing wind. Yes, Lord. Oh, come like the fire. your 
knees shall rest. Come on, Radiant, you're hungry this morning, right? Come on, sing, we need a rest. That's it, that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Lord, we will declare this morning that we will not settle for anything less and anything more, but we want your holy presence. We want a manifestation of your spirit here today. Lord, we declare and decree that we are not a church of the past, we are a church of the now, and we move of how you want to move here today. Holy Spirit, breathe upon us today. Empower us to be a church of the now and not a church of the past. Set up your church on fire. Set your church ablaze to stand out for the times that we live in today. And Lord, today I feel as strong that we stand against spirit of fear that is in our communities, that is in our country. It's all over the world right now as a church of Christ. Come on, join with me right now. As a church of Christ, we stand against the spirit of fear that tells us what to do and when to do whatever. Lord, in the spirit, we declare that the spirit of truth through Christ Jesus and the blood of Christ, it stands against the spirit of fear. And right now we bring it down. We tear it down in the name of Jesus. We declare that God is for you and not against you. We declare that God is with you in the name of Jesus. Oh, holy. Right now, shake up the spirit of fear. I feel like we need to shake it up right now. Shake it up of you right now. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we're a church of victory through Christ Jesus, who defeated death in the grave, who defeated fear, who defeated sickness, and we stand on the word of God today. keep going we're not done yet just a couple more minutes come on some of you you still need to keep working at this God is waking up that worry inside of you that you know that it's been there all along and you're waking up today the warrior inside of you right now oh Jesus Jesus we will not be intimidated in the name of Jesus we will stand strong in the name of Jesus oh of you for the first time you're, you're not feeling fear anymore that fear has been gone in the name of Jesus come on from some of you right now you're being set free from that fear and that intimidation in the name of Jesus
nothing else and nothing else will do we just want you and nothing else sing nothing else and nothing else will do come on sing it out we just want you and nothing else If you're in agreement, come on, shout a loud amen today. Amen. Amen. He's worthy of your praise. Lord, we honor you and we bless your name. Lord, we're so graced by your presence. Father, I sense that you are not done right now and you have a lot more. You are about to do something amazing. Lord, open our hearts, open our ears. Lord, for we are ready. We're ready for you to shake the things that need to be shaken off of us. As you did today, you shook up fear off of us. Lord, we know that there is more and we're ready to receive it. And we believe it in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. And the church says, come on, let's shout a loud amen today. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, his presence.
presence is so strong here today and he's moving today. The Holy Spirit's in this place today. Let's just wait on him for just a second. Oh, Holy Spirit of God. Oh, oh God. Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of fear in every individual here. We break its hold in the authority of the name of Jesus. We command you to be broken. We come against the spirit of infirmity in this place in the authority of the name of Jesus. We declare and we affirm the name Invoking the name Jehovah Rapha over this place. Every bit of sickness and disease, you must bow your knee and go in the authority of the name of Jesus. We release the healing power of Almighty God across this house right now. Oh, oh, the presence of God is in this place. I want you just right now say, Lord, I want more of you. I want to know you better. I want to love you more. Just press into him right now. Press into him right now. Press into him right now. Lord, we want you. We won't settle for less. We won't settle for three or four little nice songs. We want you. We want you. We want you, Lord. Oh, we're hungry for you, God. More, Lord. Oh, God, more. More of you, Lord. More of your presence. More of your power more of your grace, more of your love, more of your anointing. Oh Lord, release it now in Jesus' name. Oh God, oh, oh God, oh God, oh God, ha. woo. Pour it out, Lord, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out, oh, pour it out, Lord. Ho! 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 Oh! Heavenly Father, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit here today. We thank you for what you're doing in hearts and what you're doing in lives. Lord, we want to be good hosts for your presence. We want to allow you to have your way in our hearts and in our lives. God, we want to be on your schedule and we want to be in step with the Spirit. So lead us and guide us through this service we pray today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, we just got to give him praise one more time. Lift our voices. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 ho, oh, ho, oh, ho, oh. yes, oh, go ahead, greet somebody and try to sit down if you can, Woo. oh, the presence of God is in this place today, folks. If you didn't sense the presence of God in this place, just keep coming. You're going to sense it. God's presence is here. Listen to me. Don't settle for less. Don't settle for less. Don't settle for a couple or three high-powered rock music Christian concert songs. We've got to have the presence of God. We've got to have the glory of Jesus among us. We can't settle for less. We can't settle for less. This is a new hour. This is a new day. This is a new era in the time of Radiant Church. 
Pastor Kelly has a powerful, dynamic word from God today. So get ready to receive that. We're going to be receiving that in just a moment. But those that are new here to Radiant Church, we want to welcome you. It is so good to have you today. If this is your first time here and you're saying, what's going on here? The presence of God is here in this place. We believe in a living God, a conquering God, a Satan-defeating God, a curse-breaking God, the triumphant God who rose from the dead, who defeated death, hell, and the grave, and who is coming back for his church. That's who we are here, and that's what you're part of today, and we're so glad to have you here. If this is your first time, if you could reach in front of you, grab one of our connection cards, fill it out, let us know that you're a newcomer here, and you could drop it out at one of our giving stations on the way out or hand it to an usher. Let's welcome our newcomers. Give them a big hand today. Thank them for being with us. want to mention we're starting a new series today called Holy Rebels, and we actually have Holy Rebel merch, (laughs) and I think we're about out of it already. You might check off at the Missions Cafe, but if not, we'll get some more in. want to mention that we also have a Radiant Word beginning for another year, and it kicks off this Monday, so we have available to you today just to come up and take a Bible reading journal. If you'll use it, please take it. We have it for you. We want you to use it. We want you to dig deep into God's Word because everyone must be in the Word every day. You're not going to survive in this era of deception and lies without the truth of God's Word drilled into your heart and into your spirit. So be sure to get one of those today. I want to... uh, Mention as well that if you're new here at Radiant, you want to learn more about the church, great thing to do is to go and get our connection classes. They're called The Ascent. It's a growth track on how to grow in your relationship with Christ. It's also a pathway to membership. You can write us at connect at radiantchurch.org and we'll send you a link to those classes. I want to go right into prayer today and Pastor Kelly has a powerful, powerful word. So let's get ready. God is going to do something deep in our hearts today. We're not going to be the same when we leave here. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm just wrecked by you today. God, you're so good. You're so real. You're not a God simply of history and legend. You are a real and living Jesus. And we thank you for your manifest presence here today. Sometimes my body, my emotions can't contain it because you're so great. The heavens of heavens can't contain you. So how can our weak vessels contain you? God, you're so great. Lord, I feel overwhelmed with your presence today. And Lord, I pray that you would speak to every one of our hearts, that we would not stay where we're at. We would not stay the same. That we would be a different people as we leave this building today, full of the Spirit, full of the Word of God, with a mission and a calling, and with direction for the place we're to go and what we're to accomplish in this world. And so, Father, we commit this time to you. We ask, Lord, that you would speak to us today And we say it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices. Secretary, businessmen. if there's any kind of a, an effort up there yet. Now remember, oh my God. Oh my God. My. That looks like a second plane. Has just I did not see a plane go in. That... Oh my goodness. We're looking at a uh, live picture from Washington and there is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. It would appear that there has been another major explosion, this one in the nation's capital. You are looking at a scene. Saw the smoke come up and... Uh... The, the uh, explosion shook the house clear over here. Thing they ran one into the Pentagon and into the World Trade Center, and we're watching it on TV. In the 
and no this one to a class. President Bush was alerted of an attack on the World Trade Center in New York. Something was bothering him, and it's kind of like he was in another world. Sandra K. Daniels was the teacher in the classroom that day. What, what happened? Did I do something? The city on the hill has grown dark. Its lamp has dimmed. Its glory is fading because no nation can war against the very wellspring of its blessings and expect those blessings to continue. On September 11, 2001, America witnessed the hedge of its protection removed. A strike of terror was made on the land. And as it was with ancient Israel, the attack was limited. It was contained. It was a wake-up call. And it was over. And in those first days after the calamity, it looked as if America was on the verge of national revival. All over this land, people flocked to houses of worship and spoke of God. And then as quickly as it began, it was over. There was no revival because there was no changing, of course, no repentance. And without repentance, there can be no revival. Lord, on this day, 20 years later, we come to you with hearts of humility and repentance for the sins of our nation, for our own personal sins, for the sins of your people who call themselves by your name because we know of a truth that where there is no repentance, there can be no revival. So today, Lord, once again, we, your people called by your name, we humble ourselves. We acknowledge that you alone are God and without God, there is no hope. We humble ourselves before you, Lord. And we remember the words of the prophet Habakkuk when he cried out in his day. Lord, we cry out like Habakkuk, Habakkuk in his day. We cry out today and say those same words. We have heard of your fame. We stand in awe of your deeds. We recall to our remembrance today. We will never forget the way you have rescued your people and delivered them again and again and again. When they humbled themselves and repented and turned from wickedness and turned back to you. So we pray, Lord, that you would renew your mighty acts of mercy and grace and deliverance in our day and in our time, would you make them known? And Lord, in your wrath, remember mercy. Remember mercy. Lord, we humbly come before you today, laying aside our own agendas, our own clocks, our schedules, laying aside everything else. And in humility, we come before your throne and we bow down before you in total surrender. Lord, we know you are our commander in chief. 
And we are here today to receive your marching orders. In Jesus' name and for his glory, amen. You can be seated. 20 years ago today was a startling and tragic wake-up call for America. And I know today is 9-12, but as the buildings were still smoldering and, and crumbling, we were all in a wake of horror and shock over what took place. Many of us remember that horrifying day. How many of you can very vividly remember 9-11 20 years ago? We will never forget, will we? And that's what we said as a nation, we will never forget, but America did forget. And today, 20 years later, we God's people called by his name, we humbly repent. We'll never forget the shock and the horror over watching those scenes over and over again and again of the planes crashing into the towers, the smoke, the ash, the screams of horror, the shouts of, of fear and panic and profanity. We'll never forget people jumping out of windows to their death and those who were trapped inside of those burning, crumbling towers and buried alive. We will never forget the tragedy and the horror. 20 years ago today was truly a wake-up call for America, but America didn't wake up. I sat in my office this last week and I started pulling up videos and uh, footage of that gripping day 20 years ago. And, I will never forget the recorded voices of the passengers on those planes, those hijacked planes, as they were re recorded on the voicemail messages of loved ones. They called from the planes, and I'll never forget the words of one lady who left a message for her family. And she said, I need you to listen to me. I need you to listen. She said, I'm on a plane and it's been hijacked. And she said, I need you to know that I love you very much. She said, I love you, I love you very much, babe. Please tell my children I love them very much and I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And the call ends. There were several of those. There were recorded messages of several people as they were trapped inside of those burning, crumbling, buildings and, and they, they knew that they were going to die. The sound of fear and terror in their hearts and in their voices. And I'll never forget the brave people like Todd Beamer on United Airlines Flight 93. I'll never forget, and I'm sure you're much like me, we'll never forget those words that he spoke Let's roll. As several others on board that hijacked plane joined together and they stood up against the terrorists. And they took over the plane so that the plane was not aimed and did not crash into the Capitol or into the White House as the terrorist had intended. I'll never forget, and I'll never forget the words of one man as he watched in horror these words have gone over and over in my, my mind. He said, this is a whole new kind of war. 9-11 was a very visual attack. The whole world watched in horror. Yet that attack and the many multiple visible battles that are continually waging all around you and me, all around our nation, all around the planet. Every one of those battles are deeply rooted in the unseen spiritual realm. And so it's important for us in times like this to remember the spiritual realm is where the battle must be fought and won first. So we 
are a nation in utter crisis right now. We are a world in utter crisis right now. And it is important that you and I in this hour are like the sons of Issachar. And the scripture tells us that the sons of Issachar were wise and they were ready because they understood the times that they were living in. Friends, today, 20 years later, this is another wake-up call from God's throne. We have to wake up, church. We've got to stop looking at the world in darkness and expecting them to wake up and get in line. We, the people who call ourselves by his name, have got to wake up, stand up, look up, and get in alignment with God. In light of everything that's happening in our world today, we can never forget who God is. And so if you're taking notes, and I hope you are, I'm going to stop and I'm going to beg and plead with you, take notes. Take notes. Every time you come to church, bring a pad and a pen. Bring your journal and a pen. Take notes. Please take notes. Understand the times we're living in. Saints of God, we are not living in a time of peace. We are living in a time of war. It is the war of wars as we are in the last of the last days. This is not pretend. This is real. And it's time for you and I to rise up as the army of God. Every time you come to church, you are coming to get marching orders. So you get your pen and your pad, whatever you need. Open up the Radiant app on your phone and take notes on your phone and then you can email it to your inbox. But please understand the times that we are living in. And point number one, we can never forget who God is. So point number one is you must know God. In times like this, you must know God. Know God, know God. And I'm not foolish enough to think that most of the people listening to me know God intimately and personally. The Spirit of God spoke to me about a year ago when I was doing dishes. And I ended up weeping over this. And I've wept over it again and again. When he said, Kelly, many of them know about me. But only a few know me. And God is saying in this time and in this hour, you have got to know God. You have got to know him intimately, personally, deeply. And the only way to do that is you have got to learn how to run to your war room, run to your prayer closet, run to the secret place. Be a person who lives and dwells and remains in the presence of the most high God. The times we are living in are serious. So if you came for a nice little church show which so many churches today are putting on. And I pray that the fear of God would grip their hearts and they would repent and wake up and understand the signs of the times and the day we're living in. If you came for that, well, God in his sovereignty brought you here because he has a message that you have got to hear and share with others. Never forget who God is, know God. So no matter what's happening in this life, No matter what's happening in your life, in your family, in your situations, in our nation, in our world, in Afghanistan, or or anywhere else, never forget who God is. Listen, God is God, and God is still on the throne. He is unbeatable. He is unshakable. He is unconquerable. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the victorious one who cannot and will not be defeated. Give him praise wherever you are right now. Know him personally. Make it your highest ambition and goal to know him personally to chase after him, be a God chaser, run after him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And if you do, I promise you, he will be your refuge. He will be your fortress. He will be your deliverer. He will be your strength. And if you don't, you're toast. There is no love without truth. 
And the church in America has got to repent because we have withheld the truth from a world that is dying and lost in darkness, headed to a devil's hell in eternity. And we have withheld the truth and said, oh, but, but they might not think we're loving if we give them the truth that sets them free and rescues their soul from an eternal hell and damnation. We have got to repent. We have got to learn to run to him, to know him, to get into his presence. Never forget who God is. Know him, love him, obey him. Friends, there is no better place to be than in the presence of God. You, those of you, you're looking to drugs, you're looking to marijuana, you're looking to alcohol, you're looking to substances, you're looking to a vaccine, you're looking to science, you're looking to this, you're looking to that. There is no place that you will go, that you will ever find satisfaction for your deepest longings of your soul, except in the presence of Almighty God. Yeah. Run into His presence. Listen, Satan is the terrorist of all terrorists. And he works tirelessly to get every human being to disregard God, his truth, and to forget who God is. That's why we are a nation in crisis today. Because Satan has done an amazing bang-up job in convincing people that, well, I don't know if you can really believe the, all the word of God. And, and I don't know if you can really believe that this is the word of God. And, and so many people that call themselves Christians today, that go through and say, well, I don't think God had it quite right on this. I think man and culture is right and God's wrong on these things. Friends, if that's you, repent. He is giving you an opportunity today to repent he is one with his word. You cannot call yourself by his name and then forsake his word as truth. Give him praise and glory for the word of God. It is the truth that sets us free and keeps us free. But Satan is constantly working to get you to not believe the word of God and to disregard the word of God, neglect the word of God. Never forget who God is. Get into his word every day so you remember and you know who God really is. First Chronicles 29, 11, I believe this needs to be our holy rebel decree every day. I'm gonna ask you to stand to your feet. Stand to your feet at North Campus, those of you online. We are going to make this holy decree and we're going to shout it from the, from, from the rooftops today. We're gonna to blow this out of this, these buildings where we are and we are going to declare who God is to our families, to our homes, to our, our communities, and to our nation. Are you ready? Let's say this together. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O oh Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Forgive him praise again, and you can be seated. We will never forget who God is. Because I will never forget who God is, I know help is here. And I'm filled with hope today. And I pray that you will leave here filled with hope and courage and encouragement. I'm filled with faith and expectation here today in the midst of this current hell storm. I am filled with hope and expectation because God is still on the throne and God is moving where hearts are submitted and surrendered to him. Listen, be encouraged today in the midst of all that's going on. Be encouraged because God has a plan and he has an answer for this current worldwide crisis. In Nehemiah 1 verse 5, Nehemiah looked at the devastation of his day. He looked at the rubble. He looked at the ruins and it looked dismal. And as he looked at it, he then lifted his voice and he cried out and he said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O oh great and awesome God, you who keep covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. Friends, God has a plan. He has a plan for this world and for our nation today. And his plan to rescue souls in this hour out of darkness and to rebel against hell's agenda is you. Yeah. 
and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, all of you at North Campus, all of you online, it is you and me. His plan is that you, he created you, he formed you and shaped you in your mother's womb. And he put you here in this place and at this time for such a time as this. Because he knew in this day, in 2021, he would need an army of holy rebels to rise up and rebel against hell. He is calling on you today. He's calling on every one of us. And like Nehemiah in his day, we must rise up and rebel against hell's unholy agenda. And we must choose today, we're going to be holy rebels for the glory of God. And we're going to carry the fire of revival and awakening to our nation. Are you with me today? If you're with me, let me hear your war cry. Woo! Yes. We are God's answer to this world's crisis. Listen, politics are not the answer. Politicians are definitely not the answer. Science is not the answer. Modern science is so confused, they can't even tell a male from a female anymore. <laughs> science is not the answer. Liberalism and secularism is not the answer. Socialism, Marxism is not the answer. And my friends, religion where, where they cling to a knowledge of God, but deny his power and his truth. Religion is not the answer. And don't miss this. A lukewarm, compromising, apathetic church is not the answer. God says, I want to spit you out of my mouth. But a revived church, friends, come on. A revived church with holy passion from heaven. A church that is biblically uncompromising, full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit. That is the army that God is raising up in this hour to your feet. Holy rebel warriors, rise up and give him praise again today. We are yours, Lord. We are yours. We are yours, Lord. Give us your marching orders. Hallelujah. And I want to admonish you, don't ever hold back praise from him. Every time you feel like praising him, you just praise him. Listen, if you're walking through the grocery store, if you're walking through King Supers or wherever you shop and you feel like praising him, you just break out and start praising the Lord wherever you are. Because praise is a weapon of mass destruction to the powers of hell. So don't ever hold back your praise. And by all means, don't hold it back now. You can be seated unless you just want to stand. If you want to start marching while I'm preaching, you feel free. This is a time of war. Last week, last week, Dutch Sheets said this in one of his Give Him 15 posts. He said, a rebellious culture enabled by a lukewarm church has allowed the powers of hell to make great progress in this nation. Why does the church in America need to repent? Because we're responsible for the mess this nation is in. Because we feared man more than we feared God. And it is time for us to rise up and rebel against that hell. He went on to say, but today, we, God's people called by his name, those who are willing to humble ourselves and repent, turn from our wicked ways and seek his face. He said, we grab hold of our covenant with God. We grab hold of his mercy. And in the authority of his name, we decree that the giants of unrighteous government will fall. And the giants of false religion, pride, murder, immorality will fall. We decree revival is here and is coming and America shall be saved. The true church of Jesus Christ, who does not forsake or reject his word as truth, is the answer to this national and international crisis. We must never forget who God is. And number two, we must never forget who we are. Number two is you must know your identity. So know God and then you must know your identity. You may want to write in there your true identity. It tells us in 1 Peter 2, 9, you are a chosen generation, 
I want you to know, first of all, you're chosen by God. He created you for such a time as this. You are not a mistake. You are chosen and you are part of a royal priesthood. That means every single one of you, you are called to be a priest unto the Lord. You are called to minister to God and to other people. That's your, your first and primary identity is you are a priest unto God. You're part of a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him. Listen, you are called to praise him. You are called to praise him when you don't feel like it and when you do feel like it. Praise is a weapon of mass destruction to the powers of darkness. To call forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. If you have your Bible, underline those words, called you out. He called you out. You are here right now because he called you out. You are called out one. So stop living like you're still in the world. Come out. Stop living like you're still in darkness. Stop acting like the dark world you live in. Repent and turn from it. It's time to rise up. It's time to engage in this battle. If you call yourself by his name, live like him. There is no love where there is no truth. You're called to be a holy rebel. You're called to be a holy rebel just like Jesus. In Luke 22, verse 37, the New Living Translation says that Jesus was counted among the rebels. Listen, I want you to understand every human being is a rebel. You are a rebel. You are either partnering with hell, you're partnering with Satan and the powers of darkness, and you're rebelling against God, his kingdom, and his truth. So you're either an unholy rebel or you're a holy rebel. And we all were unholy rebels at one time. We were all those who at one time were rebelling against God. We were, had partnered with hell and we were rebelling against God and we didn't even know it. But when you come to Jesus Christ and you make him Lord and Savior, you submit to God. You surrender to his lordship. You partner with heaven and you rebel against hell. Are you ready to be a holy rebel warrior in these last days? Hallelujah. There is no neutral ground. There is no gray area. You're in a war, like it or not, sister. Like it or not, brother. You are in a war. And today... God is saying again, because he's so loving and so gracious and so long suffering. Again, he's saying, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Understand the signs of the time that you're living in. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 31, if anyone is not with me, he is against me. And he who does not work with me is working against me. I want to ask you today, are you working together with Jesus? He was counted among the rebels. In Luke 22, verse 37, the NLT, I want you to write this down. I don't want you to forget Luke 22, 37. And the NLT translation is so powerful. Jesus was talking with his disciples and he was telling them that prophecies were about, many prophecies were about to be fulfilled. He was preparing them for the crucifixion that he was facing. And listen to what Jesus said to them. He said, for the time has come for this prophecy about me to be fulfilled. He was counted among the rebels. Jesus went on to say, yes, everything written about me by the prophets will come true. And in Isaiah 53, 12, that's the verse, that's the prophecy Jesus was referring to that would be fulfilled. Isaiah 53, 12, God said, I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels and he bore the sins of many and interceded for the rebels. Give him praise that he interceded for you when you were an unholy rebel. He was counted among the rebels. Go ahead and say that out loud. He was counted among the rebels. He wasn't counted among the reformed. He wasn't counted among the politically correct. He wasn't counted among the religious elite or the cultural and societal elites. He wasn't counted among, among the, the anyone else, any, any other group in society at that time. He was counted among the rebels. But he was not a carnal rebel like the two men that hung on crosses on either side of him because he had committed no sin. Still, he was counted among the rebels because he rebelled against hell 
and the forces of darkness in his day, in, in that day, in society and culture. And friends, if you are going to follow Jesus, Jesus said, anyone who wants to come after me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. What is he saying there? He's saying, you've got to be a holy rebel. And you've got to be willing to stand up against societal evil. You've got to be willing to stand up against cultural and religious evil and darkness. You have got to be willing to deny yourself the comfort of being silent like they did in Nazi Germany. You have got to rise up in this hour, holy rebels. This is God's holy calling upon your life. The prophet Isaiah prophesied that the time would come when good would be called evil and evil would be called good. We are now living in that time in America. We are living in the time in which those who live, choose to live lives of purity, righteousness, and truth according to God's holy word, we are considered by society and culture a wicked blight on humanity. Wake up, wake up. If you weren't aware of that, wake up. The alarm is ringing loud and clear. We are now living in a nation and in a culture where they are systematically working to marginalize, cancel out, silence, and destroy every person who desires to live according to God and his word. And Jesus, the first holy rebel, told us, this is going to happen, guys. And here we are, 2021. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, all those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Listen, our Lord Jesus rebelled against societal evil and religious corruption, and he was counted among the rebels. And when we follow him, we also must stand against hell's agenda and darkness. Come on, there's a good place for an amen right there. And Hebrews 13, 8 reminds us that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus doesn't change. So even though governments change, cultures change, nations change, people change, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when cultures and society and nations and people and even religious institutions and churches, when they change and want us to change with them, we must remember who we are. Know your true identity. You, like Jesus, are a holy rebel. Jesus did not change to fit the cultural, political, or religious norms of his day. He did not comply. Rise up, holy rebels, in this hour of great darkness. We must choose every day to deny ourselves the path of least resistance. And we must choose to be like Jesus and be his holy rebels who take the narrow path that is hard and difficult, but it's the only path that leads to life. Number three, know your condition. Know your current condition. It is more than common sense. It is wise to assess and evaluate where we are currently in order to know clearly and understand where we need to go. Nehemiah in 4.14, I love this. Nehemiah said, when I saw their fear, oh my word, has there ever been a time when we have seen more fear in this nation? No. I mean, there is fear everywhere. And I'm going to tell you right now, here's another wake-up call. Our government right now is partnering with leaders around the world to use fear to dominate and enslave humanity. This is a societal evil, and God's holy rebels have got to stand against this. Am I going to be persecuted for saying that? Probably, very likely. But I know my true identity. I am a child of the Most High God, and I am a holy rebel warrior who is rebelling against the hell and the darkness in this hour with God's righteous weapons, with his weapons of righteousness, holiness, and truth. So Nehemiah in his day, when he saw the fear in the people, he did not join in and partner with the fear. Yeah. Nehemiah said, when I saw the fear, I stood up. Listen, when you see fear all around you and fear mongering, don't comply. Don't go with it. Don't go with the flow of fear. We fear nothing but God and we hate nothing but sin. Yeah. I'll tell you, if, if I sound angry, I am angry. I'm angry at hell. I'm mad at hell. 
I'm mad at what the powers of darkness are doing today to destroy lives, nations, souls, this generation of young people. And I hope that you will stir up a holy righteous indignation in you and in your heart as well. We have got to understand our current condition. And that's what Nehemiah did. But he stood up and he said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. And I am saying to you today, when the enemy comes in like a flood to try to force you into this societal mold and force you to take vaccines that you have convictions against, I am telling you, rise up, holy rebel warriors. Rise up in the power of the name of Jesus and the power of his blood and his Holy Spirit. I am not against vaccinations, but I am against mandates. This is a societal evil. We, you should have the right to choose. And this fear over a virus that science says has a 99.9% .9 survival rate. And my heart breaks and grieves over those who have lost their lives to COVID, yes. But isn't it interesting that today suddenly we don't hear about the flu or other viruses. Everything is COVID. Friends, this is fear mongering. And we have got to stand against this societal evil today. So we need to know our current condition. We got to wake up and realize this is what's happening. And that's what Nehemiah did. And then listen to what he said. Do not be afraid of them. He said, remember the Lord, no God. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. And then fight for your brothers. Fight for your sons, for your daughters, for your wives and for your homes. Fight for your nation. Have you ever had someone come and tell you, hey, I've got good news and I've got bad news. Which do you want first? Anybody ever been in that situation? Well, about 23 years ago, Todd and I were pastoring a church in Texas, and he had his bags packed and was ready to hop on an airplane and fly to Atlanta, Georgia for a Promise Keepers conference. And uh, he came to tell me goodbye, to give me a kiss and tell me goodbye. And he said, hey, I need you to sit down because I have some good news and some bad news. Which do you want first? And I said, well, I guess I want the bad news first. You know, like Nehemiah, let me assess the, my current condition. And he said, well, the bad news is the police, a police officer just came to my office to notify me that they picked up a man who drove over here from Mexico. And uh, he said he came to kill the false prophets and he has a map to our church. That was the bad news, 10 minutes before he left to catch a plane. And, uh, and, and I said, okay, what's the good news? And he said, well, the good news is they have him at Rusk State Hospital. So they're gonna hold him there. And I said, oh, okay. But the bad news is they can only hold him for 24 hours and then they're going to release him. So then, I, then he said, but the good news is they said once they release him, they will periodically patrol our church campus to make sure everything's okay. And then he prayed over me and kissed me and went and hopped on his little plane and flew away. <laughs> And uh, at that time, I didn't have any, um, I didn't have guns at that time. And, um, but we had two German shepherds, two 90 pound German shepherds. So I bathed them, washed them, got them all clean because they were going to be sleeping with me since Todd wasn't sleeping with me. And uh, so I bathed Victor and Karis and brought them in the house. And, and uh, I, we lived in Texas and we had plenty of church members with guns. So they, they furnished me with plenty of weapons. So so I assessed my current condition. Now, don't you dare anyone go and say, I'm telling everybody to go buy arms and take up arms. I am not saying that. Our arms, our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I am not saying go out. I'm saying you go to your war room and you seek the Lord. You get in his presence and you get your marching orders from him. I'm not telling anyone to go buy guns. So, but I'll say, take up the big guns right here. The, this is the big guns. So, uh, so he left and, and of course I, I prayed, everything was fine. I, I'll, I'll just cut that story short. But I needed to know my condition because ignorance is not bliss when you're dealing with an enemy. Ignorance is not bliss when you're dealing with the powers of darkness, when you're dealing with the forces of hell. So we've got to be, as Jesus said, as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. He said, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. 
And so our current condition in America right now is this. It feels like, looks like, sounds like our nation and our world has been hit by multiple terrorists. And we have. It's called the forces of hell. And it feels like we're crashing and crumbling like the Twin Towers. The spiritual battle has greatly intensified, and we are seeing the manifestation of that battle escalating every day right here locally, nationally, and internationally. Friends, everything has changed, and like it or not, we will never do life the same, we will never do ministry the same, and we will never do church the same. So it is so important that we make a a dynamic holy shift into alignment with our commander-in-chief. Listen, our commander-in-chief does not rule over us from the White House. Our commander-in-chief rules from the courts of heaven, from the throne of heaven. God is our commander-in-chief. And that was way too weak. So I'm gonna just give you a minute to give our commander-in-chief. So you must know God and know him intimately, know him personally, run to him, get to know him like your per- most, most intimate, personal, best friend. And know your true identity. And you must know your enemy. And how are you gonna do that? Well, one way you're gonna do that is you're gonna be here every week. You're gonna be here for this Holy Rebel series because this is just the introduction. This today is meant to stir up the warriors. This today is calling you out, calling you out of complacency and apathy, waking you up, sounding the alarm, and getting you engaged. And then every week in this Holy Rebel series, we're gonna come together. You're gonna have your Bible, your pens, your pads, your paper, whatever you need to take notes. And we are gonna come ready to receive fresh marching orders. Next week, Pastor Todd is going to be talking about our holy arsenal. And remember, our weapons are not swords and guns. They're not carnal weapons, but we fight with spiritual weapons. So do not miss this. It's so important. So know, know your enemy. We must know who our real enemy is because this battle, again, has got to be fought and won in the spirit realm first with spiritual weapons. And that's what we're gonna be doing throughout this this entire series. And one of the main strategies of hell that he uses is deception. Hosea 4, 6, God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's what today is about, making sure everyone is aware of the times we are in. No nation has ever lost its freedom and then regained it. It is up to the army of God the church, the true church of Jesus Christ to rise and shine in this hour, taking up the weapons of our warfare that are mighty through him. Don't be deceived by hell's tactics. And the only way you're gonna do that, and the only way you will not be deceived is you have got to be in this word every day. Remember, this is your sword of the spirit. And if you are not taking up your sword, sharpening your sword, sharpening your soul with the sword, if you're not in the word of God every day, you will be destroyed. You have got to make this highest priority, getting into his presence and getting into his word. This is absolutely essential for God's army in these last days. Number five, the last one, is you must know your strategy. Jesus said, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves, so be wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. I'm gonna say this again and again and again, friends. For anyone who would say, well, this isn't a very loving message, there is no love without truth. And the church in America today has been deceiving people, has been deceiving the masses by withholding truth and calling it love. This is so important. Number five, know your strategy. The biblical text is extremely relevant to us today from Joshua 24, 15. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But I want you to hear the words of Joshua in the first part of that verse. He said, if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods that your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we're gonna serve the Lord. And listen, listen, folks, even if you're not a part of Radiant, if you go somewhere else, go to another church, if they are not submitted to God and his word as final authority, they are blind guides leading the blind. 
You have got to be in a church where they teach the word of God without compromise. And God is calling every one of us today to come into alignment with, with him. And there are so many today, I know so many people that call themselves Christians, but they have rejected truth. You know what that is? That's called golden calf worship. They say they're Christians, but they've rejected God's word as truth. And when you do that, friends, that is nothing more than golden calf worship in 2021. They create a God in their image or in the image and likeness of the culture and worship it and say, I'm a Christian. No, you're not. Love without truth, or there is no love without truth. Okay, I'm going to close with this. Several years ago, I think it was, the year was 2012. I'll never forget that day. My, our son Luke was about this tall. He was four and a half years old. Now he's like this tall. And uh, he had been in his room playing. And I was in the kitchen working. And he came running out of his bedroom. Mom, mom. He had a, such a sweet little raspy voice. No, he has a real low voice. But he came running to me and he said, Mom, Mom, God spoke to me. And when your four and a half year old child tells you God spoke to them, you're all ears. So I dropped to my knees. I put my hands on his shoulders and looked him in the eyes. And I said, Luke, what did God say? And he said, God told me there's going to be a war and he wants me to fight in it. And then he took off and ran back to his room to play. Luke is 14 and a half years old now, and he still remembers that day. Sometimes a four and a half year old can hear the voice of God more clearly than those of us who are adults because we're so distracted by so many voices all around us. But nevertheless, God is calling every single one of you. Those of you at North Campus, those of you online with us today, those of you here at Central, he's calling every single one of you like he did Luke in the year 2012. He's calling you today in the year 2021. And he's saying, there is a war and I need you to fight in it. Yes. Yes. So if you are willing to answer the call of God and fight in this war, I want to ask you to stand to your feet right now. At North Campus, those with us online today, and I am going to pray for God's anointing over you as holy rebels. Last week, I was in the war room and uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, that's my prayer closet. And the Lord began to speak to me about Radiant Church. And I want to share with you some of what he said. He said, Kelly, Radiant is no longer just a place of worship. We are a place of worship. We will always be a house of worship. That's very, very important. But he said, you're no longer just a house of worship. You are so much more. And he said, Radiant is no longer just a church family. We are a church family. And it's more important right now in a time of war that you draw closer to your church family than you ever have before. If you are not in a connect group, get in a connect group. We have the warnings from Hebrews chapter 10 that as you see the day of the Lord's return drawing near, you meet together even more frequently. Come together with the body of Christ because we are in a war and we are fiercely hated by hell. But he is with us and he is the Lord. He said, you're not, you're no longer just a church family. You are a church family, but you're so much more. And listen to this. He said, radiant is not just another church where people can come in casually and be made comfortable and not challenged to move in to what God's called them to. And I don't believe we've ever been that. He said, radiant is called to be so much more in this hour. Radiant is part of the army of the most high God. That's who we are. And God is calling on every one of us to rise to a new level in this battle, a new level of prayer a deeper level of prayer than you've ever known before because this is not a time of peace, it's a time of war. A new level of dependency upon God 
and not dependency upon science or upon vaccines or upon government or upon politics. He's calling on us to enter into a new level of dependency upon the God who reigns over all the universe. A new level of humility and trust. In a time where pride is celebrated and propagated and mandated and they're trying to force it on everyone, God says, you must be different. And you must go to a deeper level of humility and trust that if God said it, it's true and it's loving and it's holy and it's right. Let God be true and every man a liar. And he's calling on us to rise to a new level of boldness against the powers of hell. To stand up against the demons of fear and intimidation. Stop being intimidated. We holy rebels fear nothing but God. And he's calling us. He's calling us to a new level of praise. Because the Lord has been telling me for weeks, Kelly, let my praises be continually in your mouth because praise is a weapon of mass destruction against hell. So we have got to stop speaking curses out of our mouth. We've got to stop speaking just all the negative and doubt and fear and unbelief. And we've got to start speaking praises to the Most High God. And a new level of nothing is impossible with God. Do you believe that? Listen, the more time you spend in his presence and in in his word, taking up your sword, the more you're going to believe that. And finally, a new level of stepping out of your comfort zones. Let's pray. And if you are ready to say, God, sign me up, I'm in. I am yours for this time. I want you just to lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands as an act of surrender. And I am going to pray a prayer over every person who has their hands lifted up at North Campus, online, and here at Central. Oh, Holy Father, you see these hands that are lifted to heaven You see these hands that are saying, Lord, I am going to partner with you and rebel against hell's darkness. Lord, I want to be your holy rebel warrior. I want to join forces with you and take up the weapons of my warfare that you've given me that are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of demonic hellish strongholds. And Lord, I pray today for every person with uplifted hands. I ask that you would anoint them with fresh oil from heaven. Anoint them with fresh oil from heaven and fresh fire from your throne. That we will be your holy army. That we will carry the torch of revival fire into the city streets, into our schools, into our jobs, into our communities, into our grocery stores. We will carry your torch of revival fire everywhere we go for your glory. Lord, we are embarking on this new era with you today. And we trust you, Lord. We know where our help comes from. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We surrender to your Lordship. And I pray that you would release your marching orders over each one of your sons and your daughters in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead. Give him praise. We're going to do things a little bit different. Keep standing. The worship team is coming, and we're going to end with another proclamation of praise as we lift our voices. But I am going to ask those that are are the campus pastors at this time to um, lead people in a public invitation to receive Jesus where you are. And then ask people to come forward and get their Holy Rebel journals. I'm going to turn it over to our other campuses now. And here, I'm going to ask prayer team members to go ahead and come up. And I'm going to ask you to stand here on the wings. We have Holy Rebel journals up at the front here. And listen, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, this is a room full of rebels. And you're either partnering with hell and rebelling against God and his truth. And friend... 
There is no love without truth. I have to tell you, you are headed on a path of destruction and darkness. There is no true peace, true joy. There is no freedom. There is no salvation. There is no eternal life on the path you're on. If you have rejected God and you are partnering with Satan and rebelling against God and his truth. And today God in his love has brought you here to hear a message to draw you out of darkness and into his glorious light. I'm gonna tell you in times like this, people have said to me, I've heard it again and again, oh, this is like the worst time ever. No, it's not. This is the most exciting time ever. This is the most exciting time ever. This is the time when the church is truly awakening. This is the time when the army of God is truly understanding the times we're living in and rising up to make a difference. But I have to tell you the truth, and if you're apart from Jesus Christ, you have nothing but death, hell, destruction, devastation, torment, and oppression to look forward to. And so because God loves you so much, he's calling you to, to you today, saying, repent, repent, repent. Come to me, come to me, he says. Come to me, Jesus said, and I will give you life and life in its fullness. Jesus said, come to me and I will set you free. Jesus said, come to me and I will deliver you from the demons that have been tormenting you. Jesus said, come to me and I will give you the truth that will set you free and keep you free. Listen, if you don't know Jesus today, get down here and come to one of these prayer team members so that they can pray with you and your life and your destiny will suddenly come alive with the glory of God. So if that's you today, get down here. We're gonna lift up our voices and praise him again. And as we do, feel free to come down and get your holy rebel journals. We are holy rebels rebelling against hell with God's weapons of righteousness, holiness, and truth. against the darkness and stand for the truth. I want to thank all of you for being with us today. A couple of very important announcements. The first one is this weekend, uh, this week rather, we have our small groups meeting. And this Wednesday, we have a special gathering at all of our campuses with Debbie Chavez. 
and you don't want to miss what she has to share, you can go online this week. And there was a video we were going to show today, but we didn't have time. It tells you a little more about it, but it's for families. Kelly read today about we need to fight for our families. Debbie's going to tell us how to do that. And so this Wednesday night, you can join one of our groups at any of our campuses where Debbie's going to be ministering to us, and we're going to have a great time of community. Also, I want to thank all of you for your faithfulness in giving. Of course, you can give by texting 84321, or you can give online, or you can drop it off at the buckets on the way out. Let me bless us on the way out. Father, I thank you for these mighty warriors going out to impact their world for Christ. I pray your blessing, your anointing, and your grace upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless and you're dismissed.